handling navigation between screens. Currently we are in section 4 and we are about to check out the third video of this section. So in this video we will first see how screens are stacked in Flutter, how to navigate to a screen and again come back to the last screen. So here let me show you visually how we can navigate from one screen to another. Now in Flutter one screen is known as one route. So if I use the term route which means I am talking about one single screen. And on the left you can see a stack where our routes that is the screens will be stacked. Now we all know that the stack follows last in first out. That is the element that enters a stack in the end comes out first. So here suppose we launch our application. Let us assume this is our first screen or you can say this is my route 1. Now in case of Android this route is known as the activity. And in case of iOS application this route is known as view controller. So when the first screen appears in front of you it is actually pushed to the stack. So within our stack we have our first element as our first route. Now from the route 1 we move to our route 2 which is our second screen. So in that case our stack will be filled by second route. Now notice here that the element which is present on the top in the stack is always visible to the user. For example here we have route 2 present on the top. So here we have second screen visible to the user. Now again from route 2 we move to our route 3 that is our third screen. So similarly our third route will be added to the stack which will be visible to the user. Now whenever we push a route to the stack we perform the push operation. Now suppose user press the back button. So in that case what will happen? He will again navigate back to the route 2. And in this case we will perform the pop operation. So here from the stack the third route will be removed and now route 2 will be visible to the user. Similarly if the user again press the back button so he will be navigated to route 1 and route 2 will be removed from the stack thus making the route 1 on the top. Fine now in the end suppose again user press the back button so our stack will be empty. And the user will be navigated to the home screen of his Android or iOS device. As simple as that. Now the question arises who manages the screens or the routes? Well it is managed by a special widget known as navigator. So using navigator you can perform the push and pop operation. So in context of our notekeeper application from our first screen that is note list screen we have to perform the push operation to navigate to the node detail screen and then perform the pop operation to navigate back to the first screen as simple as that. Now coming back to our application within the main.dart file let us change the home to our note list screen and open the note list screen and from this screen we have to navigate to the detail page by clicking on this floating action button. So here we have our floating action button. When the user click on it let us use the navigator widget use the push function pass the context as the build context and then as a second parameter you can use material page route that takes builder attribute as a parameter which will execute a function so that we can navigate to our required destination. Now here as a parameter you have to pass the context and within this function we will return the instance of the class where we want to navigate to which is node detail in our case. Once you define it make sure to import the class here on the top so that we can use the node detail class. Once you are done launch the application. Click on the floating action button. We have navigated to our detail page. Press the back button we are again navigated back to the node list screen. Now also when the user will type on any of the list item then again we have to navigate to the detail page right. So what we can do down below within our list style where we have implemented the on tap attribute let us define the same statement perform the push operation. Perfect. 
And now, since we are repeating the same code again and again, so what we can do, we can put this code within a common function. So down below here, let us define a function. And then call this function from here. And also from here. Perfect, your code will still work perfectly fine. Now also note here that, suppose we navigate to the detail page by pressing on the floating action button. So in that case, we want to change the app bar title, such as it should display add note here instead of edit note. But if the user navigate to this page by pressing on some item, so in that case, we have to display edit note here. So accordingly, let us modify our navigate to detail method. And what we can do, pass this title to the node detail class. And then here, add edit note. Similarly here as well, accordingly add, add node. Now go to the detail page and define a constructor within our node detail class that will accept the title as a parameter. And then pass this parameter to the state of this widget. And here again define the constructor within our node detail state. And then define the field here as well. And accordingly update the title of the app bar by using app bar title. As simple as that. If you run the application and click on floating action button, so now we are getting add note here. And accordingly in future we will get edit note here as well, depending on the item being clicked. Now this was about the push operation. Now what about the pop operation? That is, how can we control, by pressing on this icon, we navigate back to our last screen. Well, right now it is working perfectly fine. If you press the back button, you navigate back to the last screen. Similarly, if you press the back arrow button here, you navigate back to your old screen, right? Now, what if you want to control the code and also this icon manually? So for that, what we can do, within your app bar, you can add the leading icon, such as add the icon button here. And now the icon, you can control it yourself. Well, I will use the same icon that was actually present, such as arrow back. And also you can control the code to be executed when the user press on that back arrow button. So here I will define a function, which will be executed when the user click on it. And I will define a function such as move to last screen, that is perform the pop operation. Now similarly, when the user click on this back navigation button, which is by default present in the device. So in that case, if you wish to control the code, so again, we have to write some code for it. Now this time we have to make use of a special widget known as will pop scope, which will allow you to control what happens when the user press the back button of your device. So how to use it? Let me show you. So within your node detail page, just wrap the scaffold within a special widget known as will pop scope. So here I will use return will pop scope and then here down below let us end it right after the scaffold here for the will pop scope widget. And then as a child define the scaffold widget. And now what code to execute when the user press the back button. So for that we have a handler known as on will pop handler that will further execute the function. And here you have to write code to control the things when the user press the back navigation button in your device. So here again right now I will keep it simple. Let us call the same function known as move to last screen which I will define again shortly. And here again let us write the same comment statement. And now define this function. Where I will write the code for the pop operation. Just use the navigator widget and call the pop function and pass the build context. As simple as that. So this will actually pop the current screen on the stack. Launch the application. Click on the floating action button. Click on the back navigation icon. And then click on this arrow. 
well working perfectly fine. So in this way you can define the callback function for these two arrow within your application. Perfect. So in this video we just saw how to perform the push and pop operation using the navigator widget. Now in the next video we will learn how to perform asynchronous programming in Flutter. So stay tuned.